Field parameters are an amazing tool, which lets the user switch between different fields or different measures. But what controls the field parameters is a slicer, a slicer on which the user chooses what to show and what not. So we can create an even better user experience if we upgrade the design of the slicers. And that's what we're going to do in this video. We are going to upgrade the design by including little check marks to show what is selected and what's not. Let's get started. Welcome to How to Power BI. My name is Bas, and if this is the very first time for you visiting this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date on all of my videos in which I share everything I know about Power BI. Now, over here, I have a simple example setup of a chart, a bar chart that shows the sales development over time. Now, let's get started with step one, and that's by creating a normal field parameter that lets us switch between the measures that we're interested in. All right, so we're going to go over here to the top, modeling, new parameter, fields. Now let's call this field parameter measure switch. And then we can go to our measure table where we have all different kinds of measures. And let's say I'm interested in three of them, the total customers, the total sales and units sold. Now we also want that slice on the page because there the user can make a selection of which measures to show. And let's click on create. Now you see we have a slicer that pops up on a page. Let's make it a little bit smaller and place it here in the top right corner. Now, it doesn't look pretty just yet, but that's for later. Now, I just want to see what happens when we make a selection. Well, nothing yet, because we need to use that field parameter also here in our column chart. So let's select it, and then we can go over here and we replace total sales with our field parameter. All right, so the field parameter is over here. It's a disconnected table, measure switch. And then we take that first column, the measure switch column. All right, now you see that the chart shows what is selected in the slicer. So at the moment, total units sold. Let's switch to total sales. And you see the numbers are changing. Okay, so we have the basic functionality. Let's now concentrate on how to make it look a little bit better. Now I'm going to take that column chart and for the time being, let's turn off the title and then we can bring it back later. So I'm gonna go over here to formatting, title, off, all right, and then I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so that we have a little bit more space there at the top. Now, then we go to our slicer and first of all i want to get rid of the slicer header here so that we only see the different measures that we can switch between and then we can go over here to slicer settings i want to have a single select all right and i want to have tiles okay now let's place these buttons right next to one another just like this Okay, now that works, right? You see, we can nicely switch between the different measures. Now, the next thing that I wanna do is show the three total values for these measures. Now, the perfect way to do this is with that new card visual. So let's use it, let's go here to insert, and then we can go and look for that new card visual over there. Okay, let's make it a little bit smaller. There you go. And I'm going to place it underneath it. I'm gonna make it as big as that slicer over there. Okay, now on top of it, we can use that field parameter as well. So I'm gonna go over here to the build panel, add data, I'm gonna choose here the column measure, measure switch from our field parameter table. Now at the moment, you see only one measure shows because, well, we have selected only one measure. But I actually want to show all three of them at all times, whatever is selected. So I can go over here back to our slicer, then here to format, added interactions, then we just turn off the interaction between that slicer and that new card visual. And then they will always show, all right? Because here the field parameter slicer is not filtering that new card visual. Now, of course, at the moment, nothing is really readable just yet. So we have to make some formatting changes there. So I'm gonna switch here to the formatting tab. And then we can go here to the callout menu. And here we can make the values a little bit smaller. So let's go for, let's say 14. All right, and then let's also go for a different font. Let's go for Segui semi bold. All right, perfect. And then we can also go here to the labels. The labels, at the moment, we wouldn't need them, right? So we can just show it like this. And it's still a little bit big. And let's also get rid of the border lines, which is over here for the cards. And then here, the borders we can turn off. Filling, we also don't really need at the moment. And then the padding is over here. We can go for narrow so that we can make it a little bit smaller, you see? Just like this. Okay, now we can just line it up with the slicer buttons over there. 
probably we have to make it a little bit wider. And what's also important is that the values are centered in the middle. So you have values that's centered in the middle. All right. And just like this. And then we can push it to the back. Yeah? So over here, stand backwards. Or you just go to the selection pane. And make sure that the new card visual is below the slicer. All right. Good. So now we have the aggregate values showing for the three meshes, and we can switch between the, diff the three different meshes. But what would be nice is instead of having here buttons with the measure names, that we have little check marks. Okay, now, how can we achieve that? For that, we need to use a little trick. Now, what shows here on the slices is basically that first column in the field parameter table. Now, let's look at that table. So here in the data view, now here's our field parameter table, and you see that first column is the column that we used on the slicer. Now what I want to do is include a new column, and that new column will have little check marks. Now how can we find a check mark? You can Google it, copy it over, I see you can copy over any unique character here, or we're in the skip period, and then we go over here to the symbols. Now for me it's already on the recent, but you just have to scroll down a little bit, and scroll, 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 and there it is. All right, check mark. Okay, now let's then just copy this, and then paste it also here as the fourth value in the fourth column for each one of our rows. Okay, now here you can also rename value four to maybe just check or check mark, whatever you prefer. And then over here, we can actually also get rid of the totals. Let's just call it customers, sales, and units sold. And then we can go back to our report view. And now here for the slicer, we want to have the check marks. So we go here to the builds panel. And then here, instead of that measure switch, I'm going to use that new column. So I'm going to go here to measure switch. And then I want to have that check mark column. All right. Hmm. I was hoping to see three buttons. Why does it turn into one? Well, the reason that it turns now into one is because, well, in that fourth column, we just have, well, that check mark value. So we have to make them a little bit different. And the way that we can do it is just by adding here one space and then here two spaces so that they're all a little bit different. And then we go back. You see, now we have three boxes. Now, will the check mark be shifted? No, it gets rid of the spaces. So it doesn't really matter. All right. So you just put in spaces to make them a little bit different from one another and you will end up with separate buttons there. Okay, good. Now, what about the new KPI cards or new cards? that we have below it. Well, here we need to bring back the labels, otherwise we don't know what we are looking at, right? So I'm going to go here to formatting, and then here we can go to the callout, and then we want to have the labels back. Okay, now it doesn't really fit nicely, so let's make it a little bit bigger, and then adjust the formatting a bit. So I'm going to change the color. Let's go for a different color. Let's also make it a little bit smaller, and then over here we can also play around with the spacing. And so let's put that down a little bit. Okay. And if you want, you can also go here to values. Let's make them maybe a little bit smaller as well. All right. And then we can align it to the left. All right. Or however you want to show it. Uh, here you can also put the numbers above it if that's what you prefer. Okay. Now, the next thing that we need to do is just line it up. So that looks good. Okay. And then we can shift it up a bit. And there you go. Now, you might think, well, but I still see the check marks there in the slicer. Yeah, that's true. But that is just a formatting change that we need to make. So let's go back to that slicer. And then here we can change how it looks like and the values. Now, what do we want? We want that font color to be white. All right, so that it doesn't show. And we want the background and the border turned off. Now here, you can actually also leave one of the borders. So for example, we could say that we want the, let's say, the top border. All right, let's make it a little bit thicker. Let's go for a different color. All right, and then we can play around with the design here a bit. But first, have a look at the effect. You see, when I hover over it, ah, it nicely shows. There's a nice hover effect, okay, by default already. It's not that we can change it for slices, it's just by default that it already looks like this. And then we can switch here to the next one. You see, that looks pretty cool, I think. Now, now we just have to make it work with the rest of our design and also make sure that we have a nice little title and kind of that it fits all together. Now, to have the most flexibility, I'm just going to use again a new card visual. All right. And I'm just going to put it over here in the top left corner. All right. Just over here. And on it, I'm going to show a dynamic title. 
that shows what is selected as well. So then we can go over here, first create a new measure. Now this is then our title, where we want to show monthly development. And then we want to combine that with whatever is selected, so selected values. And then we have our switch. And we want to have the name, which is over here, the measure switch, that one over there. All right, now let's use it over here on our visual. Oh, that doesn't work. Now let's click on see details. And the calculation error in the measure title, column measure switch is part of a composite key. Da, 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 da. Well, that's probably because it's the first column in the field parameter and we cannot use it for this. So what we could do is, well, add just another column to our field parameters table, right? So over here, measure switch, let's open it up. And then here we can just add another one and say we have customers, just repeat what we have here at the beginning. And then we have sales and then we have units sold. And then here in the data view, I'm just going to rename it. So let's go to the table and let's say, this is my name column. All right, then I go back to the report view, title, and then here, instead of measure switch, I'm going to take the name column. All right, now at least we don't get an error, but it doesn't look so good. So let's change the formatting. And then here the call out value, we can make it a little bit smaller. All right, and here the label we don't need, right? So label, we can turn off, resize it, okay. Now that already gives us a title, however, I also wanna get rid of the border, so let's go back to the formatting options, cards, and then here we can say we don't wanna fill, we don't want a border, but we want to have an accent bar. Accent bars are always nice, because we can change the position of the accent bar, we can make it the top or the bottom, let's go for the top, all right? And then we can line it up with the line that we created there for our check marks, right? So over here, let's put it there. And let's play around with the size so that it's the same. I think we had three pixels before. And then we can make it a little bit wider. Okay. And make sure that it nicely aligns. And that's basically it. We have now check marks that show which measures are selected and which ones are not. So it basically comes down to adding a new column in the field parameters table where we have the check marks. Now, to make sure that all of them show, we needed to make them a bit different with the spaces, all right? And we added a new column, a name column, so that we have still that flexibility to refer to the name if we want to, for example, there in the dynamic title. All right, now let's try out a few variations. Now, okay, so variation one is the one that we just built, right? So I just fine-tuned it a bit so that it looks a little bit more polished. Then another variation that we could go for is if we just put the line at the bottom, just like this, all right? And then another variation that we could go for is to have it not horizontally, but maybe you want it vertically, like this over here, where we have little boxes, then the KPIs, the measures with their total values right next to it, and we just use the boxes to switch between which ones should show and which ones shouldn't. All right, now, let me know what you think. Put your comments and questions in the comment section below. And if you like these type of videos, then make sure to check these two design videos over here. Now, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.